If you have your Bible this morning, turn to Mark chapter 8. And let's take it up in verse uh, number 22. If you're there, say amen. amen. And he came to, to Bethesda, and they brought a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him and asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. And after that he put his hands on him again and upon his eyes and made him to look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And I want to preach for just a moment this morning on the thought of what this blind man said here. I see men as trees walking. And I want to kind of take a look at this miracle here today. I believe there is a message in the miracle for you and I today. And I, I want you to notice that the Bible says that Jesus led this man out of town to heal him. Now, I'll get back to why that is here in a minute. But I just want you to know, and I want to bring that up first because I want you to know today that sometimes God has got to get you out of what you are in before He can do what He wants to do for you. Somebody say amen right there. Sometimes you're in the wrong environment for God to work in your life. Sometimes there is stuff going on in your life and things going on and people in your life that are a problem and an issue and God's got to get you away from that stuff and them people before He can fix what is wrong in your life. Somebody ought to say amen right there. I don't know about you, but when the Lord saved me, He separated me from some stuff that was going on in my life. Amen. He had to get me away from some stuff and away from some people that I hung out with and ran around with to change my life. And sometimes God has to get us by the hand and lead us away from some things yes. and some people. And some of you here right now have issues because there's stuff in your life that ought not be there. Yes. And there's, there's people in your life that ought not be there. Sometimes you've got to tell some folks to get on down the road. Oh, well, I'm a Christian and I can't do that. Yes, you can. God don't expect you to be best friends with everybody on the planet. And there are people out there that want to pull you down and want to drag you down and you've got to separate yourself from people. Hey, Jesus said, I came to cause division. He said, I'll make the mother be against the daughter and the daughter against the mother and the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, the father against the son. Sometimes you've got to even separate yourself from families. If they're going to separate you from God, you'd be better off to separate from them. Yes. And Jesus had to take this blind man and get him out of the environment he was in before he could heal him. Oh, I don't know about you, but the Lord can come and get me by the hand anytime He wants and lead me anywhere He wants to. Hey Amen. I found out long time ago that wherever the Lord takes you, it is the right place for you to be in at that time. Hey Amen. Wherever God leads you, wherever the Lord puts you, that is the right place for you to be. When I knew the Lord was going to put me in the ministry... There's a little Methodist church down the road from my house. I can almost hit it with a rock. It's that close. I can almost throw a rock and hit it. It's close. And don't you know, I would have loved to have been the pastor at a church right beside my house. Boy, ain't that gravy. But God took me by the hand and led me to the other end of the county. <laughs> to St. Joseph Chapel, blood-bought, born again, Holy Ghost-filled church. Hallelujah! And I'm glad that he did! 
It's the right place for me to be. Praise the Lord. I thank God for that. God don't make mistakes. There I am shouting again. Somebody will email me and say, why do you shout? I get excited about the Lord. That's why I do that. He excites me. It don't do nothing for me when some big oath runs down the field with a football under his arm. It don't mean nothing to me. It didn't mean nothing to me. I know I turned the news on last night and NASCAR was racing and then people were going crazy because somebody won the race. Didn't mean nothing to me. But boy, you just let somebody raise their hand and say, well, glory, thank you, Jesus, and that'll charge my battery. It'll jump off on me and I'll begin to praise him a little bit. Amen? I'll tell you right now, I'm thankful to the Lord today that he got some stuff out of my life. I'm thankful that the Lord took me away from some people, even some relatives. And there's some of you here today that have issues because you got some stuff going on. And you need God to lead you away from that and lead you out of that and to bring you out of that thing, that issue and that problem and that thing that is pulling you away from Him. Anything, listen to me, listen to this old country preacher just a minute. Anything that draws you away from Christ, you need to get rid of. I don't care what it is. I want to say that again. I want you to get this. Anything that draws you away from God and away from Christ is a hindrance in your life and you need to separate yourself from that. Christ is to be number one. And if you want the Lord to to heal you. I'm not just talking about physical healing here. I'm talking about healing spiritually, healing emotionally. You have got to let Him lead you away from that thing which is causing the problem. You can't continue in that and ever get well. If you get sick from something, I don't know about you, but I'm allergic to poison ivy. I can walk by a fence post, my brother that has poison on it, and he'll jump off the post on me. It likes me for some reason. But I want you to know today that if I get poison ivy on my body, I can pray about that and I I can put calamine lotion on that all I want, but if I go back every day and rub on that same fence post and rub that on me, I'm going to have poison ivy forever until I separate myself from the vine, the problem that's causing it. And Jesus got this man by the hand and he led him out of town and got him away from the city of Bethsaida. And then he healed his eyes. And if you ever want God to make you whole and God to heal you and God to deliver you from things and the stuff in your life, you have got to allow Him to separate you from whatever it is that is causing the problem. Now, I want to tell you a big thing in our day today, in this nation today, is depression. I see so many people that are depressed. So many people today are depressed and have problems. And many times that can be self-induced. Now, listen to me. I want to tell you something. There is a thing called clinical depression. It is a chemical imbalance in your body. If you have that, you need to go see a doctor and let him treat you. There's no sin in that. That's the right thing to do. Go see a medical doctor. Let him treat you with the right medications to balance your chemistry of your body and to heal your depression. That's common horse sin. I should not even have to tell you that. But there is also a spiritual depression that is caused by Satan. 
Satan's got little demons running around that wants to depress you and wants to pull you down. And child of God, he hates you in particular. And he wants to destroy your life, your mind, your peace, your joy. He wants to destroy you. And the only solution for spiritual depression is Christ Jesus. He's the only cure for spiritual depression. And Jesus got this blind man by the hand and he led him down out of the out of the city. I see some messages here in the miracle. I see a message for America in this story right here. And I want to share this thought with you. The Lord now has brought this man out of the city of Bethsaida. I should pronounce that right, Bethsaida. The city of Bethsaida was located at the extreme northern end of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus brought this man out of the city for a reason. And the reason is this. The Lord had already cursed this city. You'll find that in Matthew chapter 11. You can read that when you go home today. The Lord had pronounced a curse on the city of Bethsaida because they had rejected the Lord Himself and the the Word of God and the Son of God, and He had cursed this city. He also, by the way, and you'll find this in the same Scripture, He had cursed also the city of Capernaum, and He had cursed them for the same reason, because they had rejected the Lord. And He passed a curse on these cities. And he said concerning the city of Capernaum, he said, O Capernaum, thou that art exalted under the heavens shall be brought down to hell. Let me elaborate a little on that for you this morning. Why would he say that? What did he mean that thou that art exalted to the heavens shall be brought down to hell? Jesus himself headquartered his ministry in Capernaum. The Son of God headquartered his ministry in Capernaum. They had saw multitudes of millions of miracles done by... The Bible says that... If everything Jesus done had been written down in a book, the world would not contain the books. There'd be so many of them. So they had saw the miracles he had done. They had saw great light as Jesus walked the streets of Capernaum. But they had rejected the Lord. What exalted them to heaven? Uh, Capernaum was a hustling, bustling, economical center in the region. And they had great prosperity. And they had great financial prosperity. And they were exalted to the heavens because of their prosperity. But Jesus said, you'll be brought down to hell. Translations, most of the people in the cities of Capernaum And in this city here that this blind man lived in, Bethsaida, most of those people died and went to hell. Why were they cursed? They were cursed because they rejected Christ. They rejected the Lord. They rejected His wisdom. They rejected His knowledge. And they rejected the Son of God Himself. And the reason Jesus led this man out of the city is because the city was cursed. And the Lord said they will not get another opportunity. Jesus said of this city, Bethsaida, He said if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sodom that had been done in thee, they would have long have repented. But they rejected the only hope they had. Are you doing that today? Do you know that every time you reject Christ, you're flirting with disaster? I'm talking about eternal disaster. 
Every time you reject Christ, every time you come in contact with the gospel and you reject the gospel message and you walk away from the message and walk away from the Spirit of God that is calling you and drawing you to the foot of the cross and you walk away from that, you take that chance of eternal damnation. Every time you walk away from Christ and the call of Christ, it gets easier and easier and easier to do. Your conscience gets more severed. It gets easier to walk away from the Lord. Easier to move away. Harder and harder to hear the voice of God in your heart. Because your heart becomes calloused. And so it was with these two cities that I have named to you. So Jesus led this man out of the city because he had already said they'll not get another opportunity. They'll not see no more of the miracles of God. So he took this man out of there. He had to get him out of that place, that cursed place, so he could bless him, get him somewhere. Amen. Amen. Where the Lord could bless him. And God wants to get you in a place where he can bless you. And sometimes that means you've got to move from where you are. Sometimes that means a job change. You may have been there for years and say, well, preacher, I'm comfortable there. That don't make no difference. If God says you need to go, you need to go. Sometimes that means a church change. You're looking at a man that happened to I had to leave the church I grew up in. I had been there for years. I was happy. I was comfortable there. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to give up the Sunday school class when I was a teacher. And I didn't want to leave the church I grew up in. I knew everybody there and loved them dearly. But God said you got to go. And when God says you got to do something, if you want the blessings of God, you got to do it on your life. And the Lord brought this man out of the city so he could heal him. He took him to a place where he could do a miracle on him. And sometimes God's got to bring you out of something to bring you into something. Now listen to me. I see a message for America here because America today... America today is going the wrong direction. Now, I don't care today what your politics are. I don't care who you are. If you'll be honest, you've got to say amen right there. This nation is going the wrong way. It's the truth. And we're going all the while that we're worrying about going off the the physical cliff, the economical cliff, and that's coming. The sequester thing is going to kick in the 1st of March, and if you don't know what that is, you need to get informed. And that's due to kick in the 1st of March. That's only a couple of weeks away. But more importantly, America's not just about to go off the physical cliff, the financial cliff, but America has already gone off the spiritual cliff. Say amen right there. It's true. We've gone off the deep end in our nation today. Amen? We got wrong thinking in our nation today. We're sanctioning same-sex marriage. We murdered over 50 million babies in the abortion clinics of America. And we have a city called Washington, D.C. that is full of politicians that sanctioned that and approved that. Somebody say amen right there. I'm going to preach just a little while this morning if you don't mind. We're in trouble as a nation, amen? And I want to tell you right now, that bunch up there in Washington, D.C., and I don't care if they're Democrat or Republican, they're rotten to the core. And I want you to know today that if I was in Washington, D.C., I'd want the Lord to come and get me by the hand and lead me out of the city like he done this guy, amen? I'd want away from that place, wouldn't you? I'd want to be somewhere where God could touch me. And bless me. 
I want to tell you right now, there's two cities in this nation that if I was in either one of them, I'd be getting out, and I'd be getting out fast. That is Washington, D.C. and Hollywood, California. Say amen right there. I've got a message for the Hollywood actors who say they are a Christian. If you're truly a Christian, you'll come out from among them. Say amen. amen. You can't flirt with the devil and live for God. You can't do it, can you? The Bible says you cannot walk, you cannot eat from the table of the Lord and the table of devils. One old country preacher said years ago, you can't run with the devil and walk with the Lord. I like that, don't you? Jesus took this man out of the city. This place was cursed. This city was cursed. And the judgment of God was coming to these cities. Jesus said of the city of Capernaum, He said, if, if the same light, had they have heard the same preaching in Sodom and Gomorrah, that they would have repented. I want to tell you right now, the gospel of Jesus Christ has been preached all over this nation. But we have failed as a nation to repent. And the judgment of God is coming to America. I said the judgment of God is coming to America. There is no way that we can sanction the same thing. Let me tell you something. Marriage is between a man and a woman. God said that. And it ain't none of the state's business. They need to keep their nose out of it. Say amen right there. Amen. That's good preaching. It's what our nation needs to hear. And no matter what Washington, D.C. says, if something's wrong, it's wrong. And Washington, D.C. is about like this city that Jesus was dealing with right here. There's blind. This man, Jesus touched his eyes. And, and get this now. He touched this man's eyes and he asked him if he seen aught. And this man said, I see trees, men as trees walking. May I say to you today that Washington, D.C. don't see things right. Evidently, they see men as trees walking or they couldn't murder 50 million babies and be okay with it. Amen? Amen. They don't see things right because they've got the same problem this man had. Their eyes have been blinded. Amen? The Bible says, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded their eyes. They're blind. And I'll tell you the best thing that could happen to the city of Washington, D.C. today is for the Lord to come down and get those men by the hand and lead them out of the city and lay his hand upon them. The Bible says that Jesus spit on this man's eyes and he touched his eyes with that spit. And his eyes were open. Oh, that our Savior could get inside the beltway in Washington, D.C. and begin to touch men's eyes up there and open them that they might see clearly. I want you to see this. This man had to have a double touch. Child of God, I want you to know today that there's nothing wrong with going back a second time. Say amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we need a second touch from the Lord. Sometimes we need God to touch us once again. Amen. It's okay to get yourself recapped. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even a preacher needs recapped sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. This man had to be recapped. He needed a second touch from the Lord. I want you to know today that Washington, D.C. is full of men who are blind. They may have a degree from Harvard or Yale or some other university, but they're blind. Leading the blind. And Jesus said both will fall in the ditch. Amen? Amen. They need Jesus to come. Right now they see men as trees walking. Amen? They don't see you as anything. They see you as a subject. Could I just say to Washington right now, I am not their subject. I'm your boss. 
Hallelujah. We're the boss. We put them in there. They work for us. Say amen right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, that's good right there, ain't it? My God, they forgot who the boss is, ain't amen. they? They're blind and they can't see. And the best thing that could happen to every politician in Washington, I'm talking Democrat, Republican, uh, Independent, Tea Party, I don't give a hoot what their affiliation is. The best thing that could happen to all of them is for God to lead them out of there and touch their eyes and open them. Sometimes you and I need a second touch from the Lord. Sometimes our vision gets a little out of whack. Sometimes you and I don't see things quite right. And sometimes we need God to touch us a second time and to restore our sight. The Bible says Jesus touched this man and he asked him, do you see aught? And this guy said, I see men as trees walking. May I say to you that sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees. Sometimes we don't see each other right. Say amen right there. Sometimes we don't see each other as God would have us to. And sometimes we are judgmental about one another because we don't see each other clearly. I remember an old song that said, Walk a mile in my shoes. And many of us need the Lord to touch us once again. A second touch. The Bible says when Jesus touched him the second time, his eyes were restored. And he could see clearly. I wonder what would happen in America tomorrow if the Lord touched the eyes of all the politicians in Washington, all the governors of the states, all the mayors of the town, all the principals of the schools, and all the school board members, and the ACLU, and all the God-haters got their eyes opened in America today. How different America would be tomorrow if we saw clearly as the Lord would have us to see. And thirdly, I want to mention this. I see a message to the church here in this story. Do you know in Revelations chapter 3, Jesus is writing a letter to the seven churches of Asia Minor. The last church he speaks of in that letter is the church of Laodicea. And he says this concerning that church. He said, you say you are rich and have need of nothing. Little do you know that you are wretched, naked, poor, blind, and miserable. And we see there a church a church that has become blind. They're not seeing right. And because their vision is bad now, their thinking is bad. And they're thinking the wrong thing. And they're thinking we're rich and we have need of nothing. But Jesus said in actuality, they're wretched, naked, poor, blind, and miserable. How often do we think wrong? How often do we allow our thinking to get wrong? And the Lord said to this church, I counsel thee to buy of me gold right in the fire and to anoint thine eyes with thy sight. You know what happens when you put gold in the fire? When you put gold in the fire and you bring it, melt it down, bring it to a boil, all the impurities come to the top. And when you scum Skim that scum off the top. You have pure gold. I see men as trees walking, this man said. Jesus said to the Laodicean church, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire and to anoint your eyes with eyesalve that thou mayest see. Translation, the Lord is saying to the church at Laodicea, you need another touch. You need me to touch you again. 
and restore your vision to its proper state. And my friend, across America today, there is church after church that needs a second touch from the Lord. There's a believers after believers that need a second touch from the Lord. Jesus touched this man's eyes again. The Lord spit and touched his eyes. And immediately they were opened. He went from seeing men as trees walking to seeing clearly, meaning his understanding was now clear. His thinking was clear. Do you know why you wind up in a fog in your mind? Because your thinking ain't right. Your vision's not right. Satan has deformed your vision. And you don't see right. I heard a preacher the other day at the quarterly meeting, he was preaching on pastors. And he, he, he was talking about the fact that so many ball players and politicians make such astronomical salaries. And pastors make hardly enough to get by on from year to year. You know why that is? Because our thinking's not right. And we pay sports figures and entertainers and ball players and politicians astronomical figures to run a piece of pigskin down the field. But people who care about our souls, we don't give a thought to. Jesus said to this man, can you see? And he said, I see men as trees walking. So the Lord had to touch him again. And the second touch cleared his eyes. When his eyes cleared, his mind cleared. His thinking was right. His vision was right. His thinking was right. If you don't have a clear vision, you're in trouble. I'm talking spiritually here. So let me close with this question today. How is it with you today? How is it with you? Do you need your sight restored? Do you need a second touch from the Lord? Do you need God to touch you once again? There's a song that says, They brought the blind to Jesus Christ. Touch me now, I pray. So Jesus led him down out of town and touched his eyes that day. He said, I see men as trees walking. So Jesus touched him once again. And even blinded eyes received their sight when Jesus passes by. Amen. It always makes a difference. When Jesus passes by, demons tremble, the enemy flees. When Jesus comes on the scene, He always shines a ray of hope. The darkening clouds must fly. Oh, it always makes a difference when Jesus passes by. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Do you need God today to touch you again as He did this blind man? Do you need the Lord to touch your eyes with a second touch, your heart with a second touch, your life with a second, your spirit with a second touch? Do you need God to do a miracle today in your life? If you do, this altar is open. Stand to your feet.